Hi everyone, this is me, Berger, and this is uh, the good man, uh, Cal Molinay. Uh, I hope I pronounced that name with a British accent. Um, <laughs> and uh, an anonymous third party has uh, offered us uh, financial compensation to discuss uh, topics of, uh, of uh, well, the economy in general, but specifically within... Uh, are you more of a libertarian or more of an anarcho-capitalist? I think they're both synonymous. Uh, libertarian okay. well, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. De facto at this point they are. <laughs> um, what about yourself? Uh, well, I am 100% uh, 100% communist. I'm not a communist. I'm a, uh, <laughs> I am I am extremely far to the left and we're probably about on the same level when it comes to being down on on the political scale, but I'm very far to the left. Okay. So I'm I'm very anti-authoritarian leftist, but I do think we should have a centrist government, <laughs> which uh, adds a, a few more dimensions to that whole situation. No, I do. I I am very much in favor of uh, socialized uh, healthcare and uh, services like that. I'm even uh, considering, though I don't have sufficient research on this yet, but I do like the idea of uh, negative income tax or uh, universal basic income. So I'm probably uh we probably both hate authoritarians but that's that's probably the only thing we have in common <laughs> right uh so being far left what do you think of uh communism then communism poo poo honestly i don't like it communism is um i don't i the idea of communism is is a noble one i suppose but at the end of the day, it it it, it factually it doesn't work. And even if it did work as they implement it, the violation of principle to the individual rights of people are so big that I don't I don't consider it worth the trouble, to be honest. So I'm 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 very anti-communist uh, in that regard. And also, obviously, historically, like the science is in communism doesn't work without murder, and then. It, you know, if you have to murder people for your ideology, also that's probably a bit of an indicator that the ideology itself doesn't work. Right. No, that's a good point. Um, you know, good ideas don't require murder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, cool. I guess. Uh, I guess the topics we'll go over will be, as we we're mentioning earlier, uh, centralization, right? Yeah. Um, and taxation. Uh, I guess let's lock out the easy one first, then. Taxation. <laughs> Ooh, taxation. Yeah, I know this. Uh, this this uh, taxation, this uh, theft uh, meme is very big, but I'd like to. I'd like to not strawman this. So please do do put forward the argument yourself. So, uh, taxation, I I describe it as theft objectively. If we were to define theft as the taking of someone's property without their consent, we would define that as theft. Right. Uh, and areas outside of that scenario in which person A were to do that to person B, we will call that theft. We would describe that differently if we call person C, the government, for example, doing the same thing to person B, taking their property without their consent. Uh, and so I view it then as being no different than as robbery or theft, uh, just because they were, you know, different costume. Uh, they have a different title, uh, you know remove uh you know all the stuff around there's still these individuals so you would still claim you know yeah they just robbed me right and that and being theft in terms of taxation you have no freedom to say no right the consequences of saying no or to say that i will not uh, surrender my property to you is uh, a knight in a cage and in germany if you don't pay your taxes for example uh they'll uh, put a lien on your house, foreclose it, and they'll get your taxes one way or another. Um, if you, <laughs> I have friends who haven't done that, and they go to Germany, and they're waiting for them at the airport, and they know they have a list of people who they'll arrest <laughs> and grab for not paying their taxes. So if taxes then is supposed to be voluntarily or consensual, uh, there will be no cage as repercussion. Uh, so I do, I do. I actually, I have, I have heard that sort of half of the literature on the world in the world is actually the German tax code, which nobody <laughs> understands. But I'm not sure if that's an exaggeration. Well, it probably e is efficiency. Yeah, uh, obviously it would be German. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Um, I do agree that taxes are not uh, a consensual thing, but I do not agree that they are theft. And here's the fundamental difference between theft and taxes. Uh, a thief that comes to your house and steals your TV doesn't fix your fire alarms, he doesn't uh, wash your dishes, he doesn't make sure that your door works properly, he doesn't fix your roof. Right. I mean, this is I mean, the government, obviously, the government doesn't do these specific things. Those are obviously your uh, responsibility to do yourself. But it's not like you usually when you something is stolen from you, you just don't get anything back for that. But if you pay taxes, there is a whole ginormous list of items of things that you get back from that. You get a security at the border and internally you get a, a functioning, a functioning judiciary branch. You get basically insurance for when your house, uh, for that when your house burns down, there will be people coming who will try their best to make sure that that is no longer happening. In uh, many countries, though a uh, few countries actually handle this over taxes, but over a separate system, uh, you you know you can get sick and then have the security that you will get to a hospital and it won't cost you an arm and a leg, which you know if you're already losing an arm and a leg, that's bad if you're also losing the other ones basically make you a total invalid and uh, uh, there's a you know ed you get education for free for your kids and in some countries you get higher education for free for your kids you get uh, roads built you get uh, Jesus I should I should have made a list for this um, you get the you get an army that protects your borders though I think I've already listed that um, and uh, you get a civil counterintelligence agency you get protection from terrorists who might be there you get a uh, traffic police and uh, you know basically all of the things that the government does is paid for with tax money so i do uh, if, while i do agree that it is not a consensual thing and the argument can be made that it is theft at the end of the day i don't think that holds up because when something is stolen from you you don't get anything back and when the government steals from you it gives you a whole lot of services that probably would have cost you more if you had to purchase them individually Okay, yeah, that's a lot of uh, finer points uh, in response to that. I think, though, the uh, consequences of what happens when you surrender your property to the state at threat of violence is uh, another question, right? Because then the questions you draw would be then, what about the roads, like you said? What about health care? What about the police, the borders, health care? Well, how are these services going to be provided? And so that I find to be then a whole list of other interesting questions that we can get into right because central planning goes into effect to into that believing that the market cannot provide those services and so they feel that they must socially engineer the market to create the effect of those services and good being being provided um so i have a view then but you you do acknowledge then that taxes is not voluntary that is uh mm. non-consensual you mean you said you agree that it's non-consensual it is non-consensual yes. right uh and so then being non-consensual the services that you said you're thrown back at you being a separate question then, right? How would you then, then define theft? Uh, I would define theft as a non-consensual taking of something that is your property and you getting nothing back. Now, of course, uh, there is, we have to, uh, uh, we have to admit that the government does play by different rules than people do because the government is in in a this in a functioning democracy okay in a lot of countries in the world historically it hasn't been especially you know the the more communistic ones um it hasn't been that but where was i going with this uh it is it, it plays by different rules because it is legitimized by the will of the demos of the larger people um so a person stealing something from you is different uh, not only legally, but also morally than all persons stealing from you and not all persons stealing from you uh, in the sense that there's just a group of people stealing from you, but in uh, the sense that they are that the the people who are not really stealing from you, but to an effect stealing from you uh, in order to give you services back uh, are justified by the uh, the mob rule, essentially. But also you need to be protected by uh, rights that are inalienable that cannot be changed by democracy so if you know if now if if people in the country said hey we're gonna we're gonna say that oh no you don't you don't have a right to stay alive if we want you dead 
um, that of course would be uh, against the. Uh, uh, that's where a democracy would find its end. So it couldn't change a certain, not even constitutional rights, but human rights. Of, uh, though of course, factually you could, but you shouldn't. Morally, morally it would be wrong. Um, yeah, what was the question again? Okay, so <laughs> I, I sometimes no, no, I get so, lost so, in uh, No, no, you're good. Yeah, these uh, tangents uh, are pretty good too. Yeah. Um, so you define it as taking a property non-consensually, but then you add something and to get it nothing that back. get nothing back. So if I were to, for example, come to your house and mow your lawn, and then give you the foot you the bill for you know five hundred dollars, that's not theft, right? You owe me the money. Uh, I no, capture. see, that's the that's the thing that I, that I also noted is uh, that you're not the government. Um, I don't have like it's not it's not like you can't you don't have any influence over what the government does. Uh, the government has you pay taxes non voluntarily, but it's basically uh, if you picture it as a corporation, it is as though you would uh, come to my lawn and mow my lawn, but also. I get to vote who the CEO of your company is and who all the board members are. Well, not the board members. I mean, obviously, that's not how it works. But like all the people in executive positions in your company, I would get a vote as to who those people are. Why is it then, uh, if this is such a good service, for example, mowing your lawn. So it's, it's wrong if I were to cut your lawn and put you the bill, but it's okay if government then were to cut your lawn without your consent, right, to take your money mm. and then cut your lawn, you would be okay if it was a, a guy who came to your door and said, well, I'm the government, so it's okay, but not me because I'm not wearing a government uniform and that's not okay. No, it's uh, only the, the government would only be, if we stay with the Boeing the lawn example, yeah. would only be uh, allowed to do this uh, non-consensually and take my money if it had been legitimized through the democratic process. So if some if some bureaucrat in the government just to say you know what i, th I think i think i want to make some money we're gonna we can just buy a whole lot of lawn mowers and then we're gonna we're gonna send some people over there we're gonna law everyone's mow everyone's lawn that's the correct yeah. sequence of syllables there uh, uh that of course would not be legitimate because it has not been legitimized through a democratic process now of course realistically speaking there are things that governments do that are not uh, technically speaking legitimized through the democratic process because not everything every code that the government passes also passes through the legislative chamber of the government um uh so that's always a, it's always a, 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 fi a finer point that one needs to consider but they are essentially legitimized through the ministers and i would I, I would have the power uh if i and you know all the neighbors uh, decided no we don't want you to low uh, to mow our lawns anymore uh, we could essentially ban you from doing that. We could just vote in executives in the company, in your company, essentially, if you are the lawnmower company, um, and say you're not allowed to. Who will say, well, we're not, we're not going to do this anymore? Okay, so then if uh, <clears throat> if that was not done to the legislative process, legalized to the democratic process, as it were, um, and they came out to do that without that being done, you will consider that then being that. Uh, well, not necessarily theft it, in the traditional sense, but it is akin to theft. It's akin to theft. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, and if... also, also, I, I'd like to put on put the caveat here that is, it, it would have to be on a case by case basis. So not right. not, a, not a blanket statement that it is then that no matter what. Now the um, the democratic process is done by you have a lot of competing groups interests vying for this government positions and powers, so they can have that leverage to pass this legislation, right? So there are certain people who don't want the government to mow the lawn, right? And will consider it theft if government would take the, pro the, the money and say, we're going to force the service onto whether you want it or not, versus a group of people who say that they do want their lawns cut by the government and they're fine with government stealing, taking their money from them non-consensually in order for that uh, service to be provided. Because you have, that's how democracy works. You have, you have well, many competing groups with these sort of things. And the one that wins out in these competing groups is the majority group, right? So then objectively then the one the minority group it doesn't their consent is violated by the majority group as long as they outnumber the minority and then therefore democracy says that it's okay to violate the consent of people the principle of human rights of people as you mentioned a violation earlier as long as you outnumber them as long as the majority outnumbers the minority it's okay then to violate the principle of human rights of consent 
Because well, it, that's not social. That's not social democracy. That is communism. That's, I mean, that's democracy. Well, I mean, here the Republicans beat the Democrats, and you have Trump, right? So now they're in charge, and they can pass legislation against the uh, minority group of people that lost against them. All right. Yeah, so, but I mean, they couldn't, for instance, go ahead and say well, now Democrats are banned because that will be against the constitution the minority even if the minority are not the people in power which by the way i just uh, if you i basically if you if, if people vote for the government to mow their lawn they would at that, at that point there will be consensual the government taking money i, I just want to say that but there's, um, there's people who vote against that yeah not for those people but for the people who voted pro that right and the people who um, voted against that though their consent would be violated and it would be that yes uh i mean obviously the government wouldn't have a right to mow your lawn because uh, that will be, but like, just, just let's just assume that it does. Let's just assume we have a town uh, to like break this down onto like a simpler level. So the town government, essentially, uh, the, I mean, basically, the town government. There's still certain things that the the legislative body that has been elected by the majority couldn't do. And also, if you have, I mean, I know America doesn't really have this. Um, if you have more than one party, you have more than one interest group represented uh, uh, within that thing. So you always have to um, compromise on, on that front. But, but yes, there is a certain amount that the majority can uh, compromise the uh, what's the what's the word that you the um, consent of, uh, of, of a minority. For instance, there is a minority of people who would very much like to kill people. Right. It very much likes to just just go around and murder everyone they walk into. But of course, the majority of people uh, violates, uh, you know, they go, no, you can't do that. And the, the minority goes, but I want to do that. Well, if you do that, we will violate your consent to not being free and we will put you in prison and or possibly the electric chair if you're into the death penalty. OK, so you always... <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. I, I, was, I, you know, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to add anything. No. 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 You're good. Good. Um, okay. So then, the areas of with this town you're mentioning, people are voting for the government to mow their lawn service, and the majority says yes. Right. So 51 people is a majority. Uh, there's 49 people that say no. We don't. I don't want this service. I don't need it. I'd rather compete in the market to provide these services. I would like to have that competition, the freedom to compete as an entrepreneur. Uh, and to provide these goods and services voluntarily, right? Subscription-based business, however businesses do their their interactions with customers. Um, but, you know, 51 voted for it. So that means that they can now have the power, as you mentioned, to uh, violate the principle of, of their consent. It's not compromising, it's violating, right? It's violating their consent. Uh, because at that point, because they are, they're outnumbered by one person, 51 to 49, now they say that we are justified in violating your consent. Um, you know, you can take that then to quite extreme other places, uh, like gang rape, for example. Well, you know, we voted among ourselves. We're a majority and you're the minority. And we voted among ourselves to, you know, to outnumber you and to violate your consent. Uh, not just taking your property, but that kind of can go on into a lot of different areas of questions of that. Um, now, you mentioned earlier. Now, I want to talk about, though, when we talk about taxes, you know, what happens when you don't pay your taxes? Uh, they seize your house. They take your property if you don't surrender your property. Uh, sometimes they'll take you to jail, right? If, if you don't have any property, if you're trying to evade like they do in Germany. And if you try to escape uh, apprehension, uh, uh, you will be shot. Uh, you will be murdered. And originally when you said that if you have to be murdered, if you have to murder people, uh, if those are your ideas and it's not a good idea but you're not going to be murdered if you like if you don't pay taxes and you're in prison and you try to escape escape prison they don't murder you as there's not what happens and if you run the border they will try to get you and to to possibly catch you using force but they're not going to murder you except you know accidentally which of course uh is you know as long as they yell, they're not they're not going to they're not, no no it's not accidentally it's actually accidentally i mean it might happen accidentally if you have a particularly uh, a, a government that say it, it leans more on the tyrannical side of things but uh you're not getting shot in germany for i mean there is a state in germany where there the death penalty still exists but it doesn't because federal law trumps uh state law in germany as well so 
it's bad. Well, it, it's not so much they'll murder you to try to escape. If you resist and right, for example, if I were to meet someone who's trying to just because they're not wearing that costume again, right? Review government as costume and legitimize. Someone I meet across the street and it says, "Give me your wallet." If I don't surrender my money to them, they have a gun. They will. They'll hurt me. They'll murder me. Right? If I see the government kicking down my door and telling me that I must go with them, and I see they're no different than any other stranger. Uh, if I resist and try to escape, just like I would any other person, they would escalate the initiation force, deadly force, onto me. But like that's. I don't know if that's a very. Uh, I, there's a couple points from early that I wanted to address later, but that's. Yeah. I feel like that's a very. American. Oh shit! That's a very American perspective. I, I has anyone ever been shot for not paying their taxes? People have has been shot happened? for. Well, it's, it's resisting arrest. I mean, yeah, resisting yeah. arrest. But like, honestly, I mean, you know, in America, I can imagine that you can also that you also get shot for resisting arrest by, you know, running away from police officers. That does happen. But optimally, in in a, in a functioning state. Uh, the most they can do is tase they, they, they All they have to do is make it so you are no longer a danger to them, right? And so they don't have, uh, they don't have to make use of their right to self-defense by you. Right. And there's a lot of ways they can do that without killing you or without doing you permanent bodily harm. They could tase you, for instance. There's tase guns that shoot pretty far, and then they'll they'll carry you to prison. Right. In, in, if, if the government is killing people in order to pull in taxes, that is wrong, obviously. And that, that uh, goes back to a point that I wanted to address uh, uh, that you made earlier with the mass rape thing and the, the majority thing. Right. You still it is still not allowed to violate the rights of an individual uh, because you are the majority. That is why that is where the power of the government finds its limitation. Right. Because the. Uh, even if, like, if if you have a 51, if you have 100 people, there are 51 people who say we want to, you know, have our lawns mode, mode, and uh, of course now the governing party could um, implement that legislation. But for one, there's going to be another election, and that's a very narrow majority. And of course, in some some laws, in some const, uh, some uh, systems of government, you have to some governments, some states, you have to of course have a larger majority than just 51 percent to actually put in a, a law like this or a law in general. But um, there is always the chance that the con that the the opinion of people will change, and then the ones who did the authoritarian thing, which let's be honest, having the government decide to mow your lawn is that is a bit authoritarian. Um, you could solve this differently uh, by just having the people who want to do something. Uh, who want to do that have it done uh, this applies to to different services that the free market has difficulty providing properly uh, lawn mowing services is a service that the market should provide over the government because it is better at it um, you still can't or for instance uh, with the with the mass rape thing you can't even if everyone agrees that that person should be raped you still can't do it it is still illegal because it would violate their human rights in, in like in theory, if we li if you lived in you know if if you had like if you had anarchy and people just you know I have the guns I am the government I will rape you now, that is a different situation. That is not a legitimate government legitimized through the demos while at the same time protecting the individual individual rights of people. That's the big difference between a social democracy or a democ or a Western democracy in general, liberal democracy and communism. Because in communism, if everyone decided that we we we, we will be able to rape this one person, then they can and that's that is that is what that is why communism is wrong at least we agree that uh communism is wrong uh 100 <laughs> <my dude. laughs> um i would say that um government can't make the claim to do any good right you make the claim that the government can do good in certain areas and that's why you have central relations but it cannot make the claim to do good without first necessarily doing evil and the first thing it must do in terms of doing evil, it must be to violate the property rights of other people, to take their property non-consensually, to violate their consent, right? As you mentioned, taxation is non-consensual, right? So in order for government to make the claim that we're here to do good health and services and all that stuff, it must first necessarily do evil and violate their consent and take their property at threat of violence. This seems to me to be like a bit of a chicken and egg situation, because yes, of course, uh, you, they need to take your money. Non-consensually. Um, uh, well, the thing is, 
At that point, if you have, uh, through the legislative process, decided that, uh, you know, there will be this service that the government will provide, be it roads, be it healthcare, whatever, uh, it is, first of all, it is, it is consensual for the people who wanted that to happen. It is non-consensual for the people who do not, but that doesn't mean that they don't get to benefit from those very same, uh, same systems. Now the thing is, well, uh, I mean, it is it is it is an unfortunate situation, but it is a necessary evil. All right, so you acknowledge that it's evil. Uh, now the thing is, I don't. Well, I, I'd say it, I'd say it, it. It is a necessary evil in the sense that uh, people use the word necessary evil as a, it is a necessary unfortunate circumstance. I wouldn't call it evil per se. Well, you just did. <laughs> All right, but but well, I, would, I, I mean, I would, would you say violating consent is evil? Well, that, I, I know I know where you where you're going to go right. with this. Yeah. And, uh, now you you mentioned if that if you are if you are okay. uh, if you are not legitimized through the demos, then yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. Now, when you mentioned that, it's at least consensual for the people who want it. I would say that's not true at all because consent is the freedom to give and withdraw permission over that property or. Or body ownership at any well, time. You can. At any time. You can. No, because the thing is, the yeah. moment you say that, you can't say no to taxes. You have no freedom, economic freedom, to say no to taxes. They will come and take it from you. At no point, even if at one point you say, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't mind giving them some money for social services. But if the next day you say, you know what, I, I changed my mind, All right? They will still take it from you, and you have no freedom to say no. Your consent is not regarded to that. You have no consent. So it's not consensual. If I, it's the same thing as uh, the mugger that crosses me into an alley, right? Holding a gun to me, right? If I surrender my, my property to him, I did not consent to give him my money. It was under threat of violence. And at any point if I say no, more bodily, gravely harm or deadly force might be applied to me. So even though- That is- Go ahead. That, 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 that is a clever way of framing it. Um, but while, the reason that you can't just withdraw your consent from paying taxes from one day to the next is that it's impractical. That is, let's be honest about that. It's just impractical to operate these services at a cost that is lower than the cost that a free market would provide and more beneficial to everyone than whatever a free market could provide, because that is, I think, the only services that a government should be providing from tax money. All other things should, uh, you know, be provided by a regulated market. Or, you know, in some in some places you can have a free market where it's basically, you know, no problem. Um, I think these uh, areas of services that the government, we're, we're talking about, like, you believe you should do it because you believe government should provide these services because the market can't. Um, I want to get into that. Yes, uh, but, 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 yes, I uh, want to say that and just taxes alone, right? Be because that's that's the purpose for saying what, what, we, what we have one taxes, right? Uh, because you believe that the market can't provide. I believe the market can. Right. And those are the areas of discussions that are going to be fun in a minute. But at least in the areas of taxes, <laughs> I would say that you acknowledge that are non-consensual. Even people who do wish to give the money is still non-consensual because they have no freedom, economic freedom to still say no. Right. I mean, that's what consent means. Uh, they don't have any they don't have any freedom to say no immediately. They do have the freedom to through the legislative process, which, of course, because that because a government is like a is a big, unfortunately, complex machine. And you can't just I mean, you can't if you have a huge ship, you can't turn around like in an instant. I do believe that uh, with this, with you know, with the advent of modern technology and the Internet, uh, democracy can like the, the legislative process can become faster and more democratic and therefore more consensual in that uh, capacity um and i do believe that it should because i do believe the way we do democracy in the west today or anywhere in the world is outdated with the current technological standards um but uh, the the sole reason why you the what you can do is you can put other people in charge of the of the services that are provided that is something that you can do you just can't do it immediately Right. That is the, and I do agree that that is that is also that is also unfortunate, right? It it shouldn't be that way, but unfortunately, uh, reality has imposed these restrictions upon us. Yeah, government's uh, 
you know, quite a evil, necessary evil in terms of uh, violating consent and foreboding and Un unfortunate, yeah, you say unfortunate that, yeah. circumstance. I don't, but, I don't agree that it's evil because it does. I mean, of course you have, yeah, but yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. I was well, going to go yeah, into, yeah. Into a, well, we already discussed. I, I would say violating consent at any point, any time is evil, right? If I don't give my permission or freedom to grant someone over the use of my property or body ownership, right, then violating my consent that's evil. Uh, anything that's consensual, voluntary, that's good, right? Um, and there's no waiting time for that. There's no I have to go to a bureaucracy, you know, to see whether, you know, for the person to realize that it's a non-consensual. The moment I, it's, it's a violation, I say no or stop or give me back my property or don't touch me. That's a violated, violation of consent. Um, and I would say in terms of um, back to taxation and in which we were describing ideas that are backed by murder and not good ideas, uh, you know, taxes do that. Taxes throw people into prison all the time. People die in those prisons uh, for not paying their taxes, for not surrendering their property to the government. Uh, Erwin well, Schiff, Peter Schiff, if you know him, economist here in, uh, I guess he lives in Puerto Rico, but in the United States, his father died in prison for uh, avoidings of uh, income tax, tax evasion. No, but like, did he did he did he get killed in prison for not paying his taxes, well, he, or did he go to prison and then die in prison? Well, it's hard to escape sometimes for prison. Uh, he got kidnapped for not giving government his money, and in that cage that they put him in, he died in. But yeah, but that's a, that's a, that's a, a correlation does not uh, mean causation, right? If if uh, if I if I put someone in a cage, um, and as long as I don't, uh, as long as I, I feed them properly, and uh, as long as I as I don't kill them, as long as I I do the uh, everything required to keep them alive in that cage, and then they still die, that's not my fault, right? If you kidnap someone. If, in, if, if you kidnap someone ki and put them in a basement, yeah, you feed them, you clothe them, you provide a television set so they can watch some BBC channel there, which, you know, the, the, the police will come and make sure you have your license for. If you don't, you know, know their tax and go to jail otherwise. Uh, you're responsible for that. You murder that person if, if they die in your custody in, in that cage if you kidnap them. Legally speaking, that's not the case, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you are kidnapping that person and you are yeah. violating, of course, yeah. their rights to freedom, but you're not... Yeah. So, so long as you may do your best to uh, make sure that they don't die, and you know, also if 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 all you have is water and you all only give them water, that of, of course, you know, that is your best. It would have been easy to see from the beginning that probably that person was going to die. But uh, say if you know if you, if you get the the if that person gets the flu and then dies, and even though you bought the medicine, that's not murder, even legally speaking. You, that is kidnapping, and you will go to jail for that. But it's yeah. not murder. Well, say so you were to kidnap your your neighbor. All right, kept them in a you know your closet, and uh, you feed them you know you know whatever uh, <laughs> uh, brush or you know the sausages in Germany, and you, you feed them well. Um, if they die there, you you would be charged with murder, would you not? No. No, if you kidnap someone and they die. In I your mean, they, I mean, the, probably the prosecution would try to charge me with murder, obviously, because you know. Uh, they were being smart, but that couldn't be proven because I didn't. Mur I would have kidnapped them, and yeah. I would have gone to jail for that. But uh, only if I was. I think if you, if you, if some people, if, if people die through negligence, if I were negligent towards them and, and only fed them sporadically because I don't know because I forget. I, d I do have absolutely no short-term memory, so okay. I do forget things <laughs> um, all the time. Uh, all right, so then that, of course would also be an additional criminal charge but it wouldn't be murder because uh, for something to be murder it needs me to uh, go out there and decide that i will now kill this person it's that a is, long that is murder. drawn out murder it's uh you kept them in a confined cage is now they're not living their life you put them in a position in which you're responsible for their bodily uh, well-being at that point right yeah but sometimes there are there are factors that are outside of my control if he if he gets the flu, of course, I mean I might be charged with manslaughter in that situation, but yeah. not with murder, and, and that is also something because murder requires the the uh, I want I will now kill this person and I want to kill this person. If the person were to try to escape, uh, you'll apply uh, escalating force. If they were to resist your tasing and were to fight back from being kidnapped, uh, you escalated to deadly force, as is the case when interaction with police or kidnappers, right, you would be charged with murder. Sometimes people don't want to try to escape because, you know, the end result will be murder. And so they try to be as, uh, you know, compliant otherwise. Yeah, I do, I do agree. But uh, if, you, if you're talking about, the, I mean, obviously, if you do talk about the police doing this and if, if people die 
from the police while they are, you know, if, if, if they're only escaping, if they are antagonizing the police with weapons, you know, if they're just antagonizing the police, you could still tase them. If the police are doing their job right, nobody should die unless the police is attacked by that person. Um, you have a use of deadly force in the police as well in the military, I was military. And so you have a situation in which the, the uh, suspect is resisting and you feel there is a bodily threat of harm to yourself, including deadly force, you escalate it yourself and you pull the trigger. Uh, and so if someone legitimately feels that the stranger, me, is because I'm wearing a green costume or a blue costume, uh, were to fight back, right, they're within their rights, especially for a victimless crime of not surrendering their property to the government. Um, and if I were to apply further because they're trying to resist an escape, I, that, objectively, that's murder on my part. Just because I call myself the government doesn't excuse the objective fact of, of the circumstance. Yeah, but if, uh, I mean, the police is not above the law, right? If you, uh, this is something that always has to be examined on a case-by-case -case basis, of course. Uh, that is why the police should be 100% always wearing body cams and shit like that. So they are uh, able to be held accountable by the judicial branch. Uh, if you are, you, if you did not pose a threat to the police, uh, a credible threat, or uh, there was no uh, extremely good reason, I don't think, I don't know what the, what the exact, uh, that would probably be the difference between murder and manslaughter, wouldn't it? Because if you, uh, say you, you, you were sort of resisting arrest, but you, you, you do not possess a lethal weapon, but you are resisting arrest, and then a police officer uh, kills you because they, they have reason to believe that you do have a lethal weapon. Probably they could, depending on the circumstances, be charged with manslaughter. Uh, and if you did have a, uh, have a deadly weapon, then they might, uh, no, with, yeah, with manslaughter. Then they would not be charged with manslaughter. It doesn't have to be a deadly uh, weapon. It just can be just you further resist it. No, I mean, not, not even resist. It just can be you just continue to resist. It happened to uh, Eric Garner in New York for selling uh, Lucy's cigarettes. It happens yeah, to a lot of people. That is a failure of the judicial branch uh, because of a corrupt system. That is not an argument against government in and of itself. That is an argument against non-functional uh, law enforcement. Because I, uh, if, we, if we're going to talk about how the law enforcement of the United States of America doesn't work and does violate individual rights, then I would 100% agree with you, right? That is that they do that and they should be, uh, you know, they, they, they shouldn't. They Abolished. shouldn't be able to. I, no, I, I don't agree they should be. I mean, <laughs> they, it might be helpful to have a purge and then, you know, build the whole thing from the ground up. Um, that might be an approach to do, but it's not something that should be abolished because then your neighbor's going to come to you and it's going to steal from you. And oh, then what do you see? Do? Now that's the that's the belief that you think that uh, I don't want police. I want police. I want roads. I want security. I want healthcare. I want firemen. Uh, you listed a a couple of things earlier about what you believe that a centralized uh, government provides, like uh, insurance for houses that burn down, firefighters. Over seventy percent of the firefighters here in the country are voluntary. You know that shows yeah, that yeah, yeah. So you don't need centralized government to provide that. The market does a pretty good job. Vol people volunteer no, to provide that. But I like, think it's great. A fireman doesn't put out a fire. A fireman with uh, with a fire hydrant and a, and a fire engine and the necessary training and equipment, he puts out a fire. But all that stuff needs to be provided first. And that's why they go out there with their boots and intersections around here asking for donations. All this stuff is voluntary donated. Uh, you have um, your instances of roads. Uh, here in Virginia, where I'm from, uh, government doesn't build roads. Businesses do. Uh, I mean, they, businesses always build roads, but the government pays them to do it. Right. So the government, uh, you outsource the money to a third party where you have no freedom of uh, economic choice to select the road builders. And so now you have uh, collusion here. The politically connected will get those contracts and such. Uh, but that's a problem and right. it shouldn't be that it way. It shouldn't be. It. But at least it acknowledges that it's businesses that build the roads. Um, government is just the middleman of bureaucracy needlessly in which you're paying extra money to go to another bureaucracy and going straight to the business to build it for you. Uh, That's not, but go on, do, do oh, yeah, finish yeah, your point. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, the other points would be uh, healthcare. You have Alfie Evans in England. Uh, you know, we have the situation of the parents who wanted to just take a chance with their child, even if it was brain dead, even had other circumstances, but you had British police lined up outside that uh, hospital to stop the parents to, uh, you know, with, with force, if they have to be, because they're armed, 
to prevent their child from being escaped. And that's socialized medicine uh, in England. And then you mentioned about public schools here in Richmond. They just ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> public schools ran out of toilet paper just last week. They're just announcing that. You know, this area of centralized uh, control makes it difficult to allocate resources, makes it difficult to see where things need to go. And for those reasons, I advocate for capitalism. I find capitalism to be the most efficient way to allocate resources. Uh, where resources need to be in supply and demand, areas where there is centralized control because they believe that the market can't do it, you run into areas of uh, mass starvation, mass deaths like China, centralized uh, farming. You have Venezuela right now. People say, well, that's not real socialism. That's socialism. Uh, that's, that's central planning. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my little tangent from there. I guess we can talk about now uh, where... You believe? Wait, that. I want to. I want to. I want to. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick. Um, for one, uh, UK law enforcement also a bit of a bit of a bit of a prickly subject. Don't like them either. I think. I think you are conflating mismanagement with the. Uh, you, you are pointing out legitimate cases of mismanagement that shouldn't have happened, but uh, those happen in corporations also. We just don't hear about it that as much because. We don't scrutinize corporations in the same way we do the government. We can't. We don't have access to the same type of information. Um, there are legit. There can become legitimate problems. Uh, legitimate problems can happen when things are mismanaged by a central planning authority. That doesn't mean that the principle of central planning authority is bad, because uh, a lot of the time things are not mismanaged. And you, I mean, you don't go. You don't go. Uh, you don't uh, hear, watch the news and people say uh, everything was fine today in school and nobody had a shortage of toilet paper right you have centralized school systems in in the in uh, the majority of the world and even in in america most of the time they work i mean yeah you will have a problem where they didn't have toilet paper and that's fucked up and that needs to be remedied there needs to be a certain flexibility and i do believe that many of our institutions are a bit too inflexible um so i think that they can learn a lot from corporations but a, a thing that uh, that yes uh, businesses are the ones that actually build the roads uh, and you don't, uh, and that is actually cheaper. For one, it, it would be more, it would be quite expensive for the government to have a, a workforce for that, uh, aside from like, a, you know, often, you have, sometimes they have army uh, engineers and stuff like that, building roads in precarious situations. But the thing about the government is that it is in a much better negotiating position than uh, a group of people, because the if you provide a service and you only have one customer, for one, that customer... Uh, well, the government isn't legally allowed to fuck you over, um, even though, you know, uh, it, 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 it might happen when it comes to collusion. But uh, that customer then has the uh, has greater power over to control your price. So you they will get the thing at the cheapest price. There are certain uh, goods and services that have well, mostly services um, that have something that's called uh, an elastic demand. So, for instance, if your house is on fire, you will probably pay any amount of money to make sure that it isn't on fire anymore. That is a, that is a service that has an elastic demand. Uh, if, however, you find yourself in a position, in a, a more powerful negotiating position, which is the government takes on your negotiating position and the negotiating position of everyone else, um, of course, firefighters are, are a bad example for this because in many states they do work voluntarily and are horribly understaffed. Uh, because the government did, doesn't give them the uh, funds that they require. Uh, but if we talk about healthcare, for instance, that's a big problem in America. That uh, uh, because uh, neither healthcare provider, uh, because uh, healthcare health insurers can't negotiate with healthcare providers, and of course, an individual that's dying from cancer is not going to uh, start negotiating much with the with the doctors that want to charge him uh, half a million dollars for for a medication that you could get for fucking twenty five dollars in just over the border in Canada because you're dying of cancer and if you don't get that you'll die and that's and that's that's it that's done so the government can provide services that have an elastic demand uh, to the uh, demos at a much cheaper price and other services also at a much cheaper price than the free market could because in the free market the service providers would have a negotiating position that is too strong and uh, would eventually uh, disturb, um, make things more expensive that shouldn't be as expensive as they are. Okay, that's a lot of uh, 
interesting points you bring out, especially the expensive as they are, uh, meaning that uh, difficult for people to pay prices, pay goods and services. And I find it then when here in the United States, when nearly half your income goes to the United States government under taxes, yeah, it certainly will strain your wallet. When you have centralized uh, banking, for example, with the government and the monopolization of currency, the value of the dollar in your pocket will continue to depreciate. And so, you know, that leaves those for worse for poor who try to save money for that dollar continues to depreciate over 97% of the value of the dollar has been lost since 1913, the creation of the Federal Reserve. So yeah, purchasing power does continue to lose. Uh, people in terms of things will get expensive because it's difficult for them to pay for goods and services and when nearly half their income thanks to Uncle Sam is taken away from them. They have to work one third of the year just to pay for taxes, for example. Um, but expensive in terms for healthcare and certain goods and services as you bring up for healthcare, uh, yeah, things will be expensive when you have a bottleneck approach towards the production of doctors in the market and there's government laws limiting the amount of doctors that can be out here in this country. So of course, when you limit the amount of supply, it will certainly make things a lot more costlier. Um, the original, <laughs> an earlier point you made about high schools and uh, public schools, uh, here in America, I think that is great. 80% uh, of New York high school graduates uh, are illiterate, can't read. That's a I big, find big number. That difficult to believe. Yeah, yeah, no, Google that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you, you find that even reading grade levels have gone down tremendously over the decades, although now it's not fourth grade reading level. It used to be 12th grade. Uh, it goes down. When you have uh, this monopolization and there's no market competition, uh, the cost of things continue to go up and escalate. The quality of things go down. There's no market competition for anyone to compete and say, hey, I could provide you a better service, right? I could probably do it cheaper. Uh, and so when you view, when I, when I view the monopolization of these goods and services, you look at like uh, the post office here, USPS, billions of dollars in debt. Uh, it's illegal and criminal for anyone to deliver pieces of paper. FedEx, UPS, DHL can deliver only packages. And it's also legal for them to underprice uh, USPS. So when I, when I, I think there's uh, some misconception, of, I guess, because I advocate anarcho-capitalism, right? I advocate a free market capitalism. Uh, I'm not, I'm not saying... I, I don't want these services for everyone. I do want healthcare. I do want security. I do want schools. I do want all these things that you want as well. Um, but I want also uh, the freedom to compete entrepreneurially to provide these goods and services, right? I mean, if the government wants to compete in the market, provide it, great, but also allow other people to compete as well and not make it criminal or illegal for them to also compete in the market to say, well, let me provide these services too. I think I too can do a better job or a much cheaper price than the government. But yeah, but the centralization and monopolization, like USPS here in Virginia, there's a monopoly on, on liquor. Only government can sell liquor, right? Uh, creates those kinds of problems, right? I'm not saying I don't want liquor. I want liquor. I want I want security. I want law. I want rules. I want these things. But the monopolization of government, especially um, judicial system, is abhorrent because the police works for the government. The prosecutor, the defense attorney, when they give it to you, works for the government. The judge works for the government. You can't say that's uh, <laughs> impartial, right? But, but judges convict the government of shit all the time. The judge does not work for the government. Who, the, who do you the think? The judge works the, for the judicial branch, which the, is part of, of the, the government. government. Yeah, so they work for the government. They get their paycheck from the government. It's not. It's not that simple. The government has a. The government is not a. A centralized system is not a. Is not a totem pole. Right, the government is a thing is is balkanized into many different areas. The judicial uh, branch uh, can can and does convict governments for things all the time. Once again, I think you have a certain uh, you point out issues with uh, poor with poorly executed centralized planning of things, uh, with pe poorly executed decisions where, where people made the wrong decisions and poorly planned something. Um, and using that as an argument against the concept of uh, of, 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 plan of the centralized planning uh, in and of itself, which uh, I could point to you to a million things that where it does work, right? Schools in the Scandinavian world and really all of Europe, uh, we, do, we don't have a problem with 80% illiteracy. That is that is insane. You have that, uh, poor rating of universities, though, of the lowest ranking, especially in, especially in Germany. We we have very good. I mean, we have ranking. poor universities. We have bad universities in Germany, but we also have extremely good universities in Germany, right? It's, I mean, this is like U U.S. hospitals. I think out of the top 10 hospitals in the world, of course, 
Five of them are U.S. hospitals. The U.S. has some amazing hospitals. But on average, the U.S. hospitals aren't all that great. That's a, that's a problem. And the, 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 I mean, the problem with the American government is in many ways that it does try to centralize things that it shouldn't, because even in government, you need to have a certain the balkanization of things. Because what... Uh, uh, so uh, a lot of a lot of specifics, like the supply of toilet paper to a school, shouldn't be handled by the federal government. That is an element of the educational system that should be handled by a local government. That's something that I find very important that you have a, a um, and you don't have a. I don't like centralization of government as it is. There are some things that a that a centralized government is required for, but I think uh, more. I am I am uh, I'm, I'm I'm what Alex Jones would call a globalist, uh, <laughs> wherein I do believe that there must be a world government, but only for a very limited number of issues. Uh, I do believe that uh, in most regards, state law should trump federal law in this hypothetical system that I that is I have do not even have the time to begin to describe. Um, I think there are certain things the centralized governments do that they shouldn't, but that doesn't mean that that is the principle of centralized government that's wrong that's just that they are perform that there are examples where they perform poorly much as there are examples as uh, where the market performs poorly now of course in the market you have the advantage that uh, sometimes that often if you perform poorly and there is competition not if you have a monopoly on the market which you which uh, at some point you have a runaway mon monopoly and you can especially basically ensure that you keep that monopoly for in perpetuity um uh, that of course can uh, happen in the market, which is why I agree that some services should be provided not by the government but by the market. But you said something about doctors. What do you what do you mean with with do with doctors that there's, the government um, is artificially limiting doctors? Yeah, there, there's laws to limit the uh, production of doctors out there in the field. So but, I mean, how how exactly is uh, sort of uh, they, manifest? They have, they're uh, e even in England, they have laws that uh, have a uh, I guess you can say. Uh, certain number of quotas or certain number of uh, licenses can be handed out, uh, and so it kind of in a way limits doctors the production of uh, these medical fields. Now, if we're talking about why goods and services are so much, is because the production of doctors are not allowed to be freely available as they they should be. Right, more doctors in the field will lower the cost of goods and services. Um, yes, I agree. I agree that more doctors in the field would probably right. lower yeah. the cost yeah. of goods. The problem, the problem is that not everyone can just go out and be a doctor. A doctor is something that requires uh, requires extreme intelligence. It requires extreme work ethic. It requires very focused intelligence. Um, I mean, be, the road to becoming a doctor is an arduous one because you don't want because you don't want doctors to make mistakes, right? You want the best possible doctors that you can have. And that, that, is, that is the sort of highly qualified personnel that unfortunately there is a dearth for because there just aren't enough people that could theoretically do it. This is why we need to invest uh, in, in better, not in more education, in better education. So we can have more people in a better educational system. Uh, we can have more people that uh, can do more highly qualified jobs for which there is always a dearth of personnel. So the cost of those services can be lowered even in the market. Have you ever heard uh, of um, friendly societies, mutual aid societies? I, mm, I might have, but I'm not sure what you mean by this. So these were um, before the welfare program, before Lyndon Johnson's uh, war on poverty kicked in and Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, so you had a lot of these, uh, you have a lot of wave of immigration coming in here as well. You had a lot of people who couldn't accept, uh, ex, you know, afford expensive services, but there were doctors in those fields in which they could provide for these communities. They pay in like, uh, like an insurance program, uh, a small amount per month. If you were to be impoverished through no fault of your own, you know, losing a wife, car, uh, sick, uh, you need to, urgency of hospital, these communities, these friendly societies would pay for that. And they had doctors available and that's how the market provided needs for healthcare. This is before 1960. Uh, and this not just ran here in the United States, but also in Britain. Um, a good cursory uh, Google search will find you a host of interesting historical examples of friendly societies and how the market provided health insurance uh, services uh, for people in need, for, for everyone. Uh, and you find then 
through these programs, the poverty rates were declining. You find that through these programs that uh, the well-being of people in terms of the health care needs uh, were greatly improving. And it wasn't until the government seeing that this particular independence streak, because when you find that you can provide these services for yourself in a market uh, and not have no need for the government, uh, that's the last thing that they sought. So they saw, they sent in their code inspectors. They sent out their uh, investigator, you know, city council members to go out there and, you know, investigate and say, yeah, well, you know what, this building is not up to code. You know, you're going to lose your license. They threatened doctors. And the whole thing was abolished, like, within a couple of, three, a couple of years. Um, and just to pave way for the government to create then their Medicare, Medicaid services. And from that time in history, which is why people who are born from sense believe that the only way we could ever have health care is cause, because of that. There's a whole history before that that people have forgotten. Like 1984, they rewrite these sort of things, especially in public schools. Uh, but especially here in the United States, there used to be a, a postal service that competed against the government's post office, United States Postal Service. And he did it cheaper and faster until the government saw him as a threat, Lysander Spooner, uh, sued him out of business and then passed a law saying, okay, we're not dealing with that anymore. It's illegal and criminal for anyone to compete with the USPS. So there's, there's a history, market history, factual evidence to show the market has provided health insurance. The market has provided uh, postal service, uh, security service, all these things. But most of this stuff has been, you know, uh, pushed aside uh, through like eminent domain and a lot of laws to kind of push aside uh, market services in favor of government ones to increase centralization of control because you mentioned that you think that you want gov global government for a few services but it never stays just a few services it never stays a limited government it always finds other ways to monopolize to increase that collective control uh it never stays a yes a small little uh, you know bit of government intrusion in your life it, it just continues to increase like a like a tumor um my last note i just wanted to say was at least the mismanagement and corporations are things that i don't have to pay for right uh, the mismanagement of uh, Blockbuster here and their video services that could not compete in the market against Redbox. Uh, I didn't lose a dime. I don't lose any sleep. Uh, if they can't compete, that's, that, that's their own problem. I don't lose any. But when government has mismanagement, I suffer because they monopolize those services and I'm forced to pay for them. If they have a union, uh, you know, stalwart bust in which no one's going to provide those services, I suffer because no one else is allowed to provide their services. There is, uh, for example, the uh, forest industry here, um, wildlife here, uh, kept people in their hotels and the woods and the forests. They were not allowed to leave because they were not getting paid. And so, you know, people suffer when government does mismanagement, but I don't suffer if Blockbuster or Netflix or regular businesses mismanage, right? If I'm not part of the patrons. Well, but if you are part of the patrons, you do, and you, you know. But that's then a, I don't think that's then a, you can sue. That's a uh, that's a um, you you can you can sue the government, right? Like you, you you can sue the government. Judges that is have possible. immunity. People do it all the time. Judges have immunity from their own. It's just, they have no liability for their actions. Say prosecutors. Yeah, because they're the judges. Thing. Yeah. You can go to a higher court, I mean, I mean, and you can if a, if a judge uh, um, doesn't, you know, if a, if a judge, for instance. Uh, is uh what's the uh, english is not my first language so I sometimes uh, miss Same. words <laughs> uh, <laughs> um the if a, uh, for grave violations of protocol judges can become disbarred i mean judges are not above the law either but uh, what i wanted to note is that you you speak a lot about the us and the the uk and uh the problem with both of these countries is that they do a lot of, I mean, every country does a lot of things wrong, but um, the U.S. government is a very unique entity in that it uh, has the has this, uh, uh, what befits Jupiter does not befit cattle uh, mentality uh, in, in geopolitically and also uh, internally in the country, because... I don't believe the United States of America is a functioning democracy. Um, and uh, I mean, the, neither is the UK, obviously, because it's, you know, not a democracy. In the, <laughs> you know, they have incest. Um, <laughs> but what you always have to consider, which I do, I agree, do agree that, for instance, the NHS is, uh, is, not, is not a good uh, healthcare service provider. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty shit. Um, it is a good, uh, but we also have to always realize that a lot of that happens because uh, people who would rather provide healthcare in the free market um, and overcharge people for it, or just charge people for it anyway, 
uh, lobby with uh, with political figures so that they will then put people in place or directly make sure that these government agencies do not function in the way they should. Now, that is a problem of political corruption. That is a problem that needs to be resolved. Uh, that's not that's not how it should be. It should be one person, one vote. It shouldn't be one person with a, with a million dollars, one million votes, right? Um, uh so there's there's always there's always this additional dimension to it and i think that saying that uh the government always becomes more and more powerful and just wants more and more power i feel like that's a bit of a that, that's a bit of a, a slippery slope argument that doesn't actually uh it isn't actually uh, founded in in observable reality in in many i mean it probably is in america because of how the american government operates but in many other countries you don't you don't actually see it that way right in uh because we have a, a certain a certain interaction between government and corporations where they uh they're not on eye level but corporations can also represent their own interests as part of the demos because the corporations are part of the demos uh in terms of the free market right you say that they're not but then no corporations corporations no, no, no. are part, not people but I, they I, are part I, I, of the... I'm, I'm, I'm a corporation you say that they don't centralization doesn't continue to increase centralization has a history of increasing you start off with the monarchy you start off the monarchy centralizing its powers and taking away from the nobles who centralize that power in the state and then you have the modern state in which that centralization of control extends to pretty much everywhere to social welfare to schools that never government before never had a vested interest to be a part of it uh, healthcare now right these kinds of uh, centralization continues to increase in every facet of your life from its origins it has centralization of control and dominating local countries france itself or germany did not was not was uh, was many different municipalities different different communities different tribes oh yeah and we wanted to form a united german nation they were conquered to turn into mm -hmm. a united mm -hmm. That's, you have a hundred years mm, yeah. war you that's have, not really true that's, it is have, conquering competing kings and princes in the Holy Roman Empire before it became that, the big modern state that it is. Its history is conquering its neighbors and conquering other city-states. That That is, that's not wrong, but it's also not exactly right. The uh, modern state of, oh shit, that's my grandma. Give me a moment. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, to tell right. her yeah. to, to not call me. <laughs> I already had to blow my grandmother off yesterday, so I told her to call me in half an hour. Um, <laughs> ah, terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, you're where was good, I? Yeah, your um, grandson for continued uh, reminder that you know he still care for her and all that stuff. So, I mean, yeah, she's uh, my, my grandparents are the only part of my family that actually gives a shit about me. But uh, let's not talk about that. Uh, German, the, the formation of the German state. It uh, it used to be you know different. Uh, uh, and by the way, that the the control that no, that the, the nobility used to have, or the you know the kings of the lords, which were also part of the nobility, uh, uh, over the the over the demos, that was absolute. The demos had no say, unless they were born blue blooded. Um, and uh, and what happened in many uh, in many nations is there, that there was a process of democratization where the government uh, was no longer legitimized by I am the government, therefore I am legitimate. But the government is legitimized by we want this, and if we don't want this, it's no longer legitimate. But uh, stay with the German example. Um, the German people were not conquered. Uh, the German people wanted a unified German nation. Um, which they uh, they actually handed the crown to the uh, in 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 one instance they they formed a parliament against the wishes of the government, and then they declared because they thought we need to have a king because we're a nation and a nation needs to have a king. Or at that point, I think it was the it was uh, the Kaiser, the emperor, and they went to the emperor and said, "Hey, how would you like to be emperor? We, the parliament, have decided that you shall be emperor," and he said, "But you're not God. You can't do that." I, I am. I am the uh, uh, a nobleman. Can, uh, uh, an emperor can only be declared by uh, by the, the the grace of God. You have no right to do this. Now, at the end of the day, it in 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 like the second German Revolution for independence that did end up you know changing. Um, and we did have an emperor, but we also had a, a a democratic system in place. And so the the absolutism of the power of the government was reduced 
and balkanize to give more people control over what the central governing organ can do. So really, historically, we have seen a, a move away from, generally speaking, away from absolute or top down authority to the authority of the top being legitimized by the bottom. That, that sound that sounds like it that sounds like something that they would say in a gay club but uh... <laughs> now the thing is uh, what I'm mentioning historically before we get these centralized states before Germany you have the 30 years war you have uh, millions of people decimated through warfare conquering each other right that's uh, before the massive centralization of the states that we know today of England as well England was made up of many different tribes centralization begins by conquering other neighbors, begins by decimating populations and murder and mass warfare before they can get to the size where they are today. And now they can create this excuse to say it's for democracy, that is for peace mm. and it's for unity. Uh, I mean, you have problems still in Ireland with that. You have right now, we, we, uh, earlier we were talking about Catalonia and that uh, they're, you know, it's perfectly fine for them to secede. But before the secession, there were many wars in Spain and those wars and problems in Spain that they had uh, conquering and fighting each other led for their demise and uh to let the muslims conquer them and that uh during that time and period right so the com competition for centralization in spain wasn't a very stable reason for them not all to repel that invasion and they were conquered for for several hundred years i'm just saying that the history of centralization before the states that we know them today have a history of conquering each other and murdering each other before we can call them the great France, England, Germany, uh, Russia, United States. Uh, and so, you know, we can't just look at centralization as this like, uh, you know, utopian, interesting model when it has a history of bloodshed and mountains of bones and skeletons underneath them. It is not. Um... Okay, I do agree that many of the, these nations generally do spring from the history that has happened before. Yeah. But uh, you seem to imply a certain uh, that in the the conquests that were done by, say, the the, the Prussians or the or the the, the Castilians um, were uh, in the name of centralization. That's not that's not the case. It was in the name of expanding the power of this noble family of these essentially of these wealthy people that had enough money to buy themselves and had historically had the, the legitimization and power to construct around themselves a mythos that we are the royal family with the blue blood and we have all the wealth and therefore we will now use the people that we pay personally, right, from the money that we take from you involuntarily Taxes. to expand... To expand our power. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But that was, uh, I would even argue that that was closer to an anarcho-capitalist situation. Because the, the people, the wealthy people, were the ones in charge directly. They were the ones with the capital. They were the ones who could sponsor armies. And of course they then went ahead and they just took the money from the peasants. Because why wouldn't you? Um, you, you, ha you have all the power. And that is, you know, why all the conquests happened. Because these people obviously wanted more power. The, of course, the centralized nations of, uh, of today spring from this, and some have remnants of this, like royal families um, that, you know, with their... With their um, First pay uh, for the with, wedding in England. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, for instance, that's, a fu that's some fucked up shit. That's some fucked up shit. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, but the, they don't the have... Royal I, I'm pretty... Like, the, they should give the royal family Buckingham Palace and, like, all the, all the things that royal family owns... And they could make tourism revenue off that, and they would still be one of the wealthiest families in the universe. Right. Let's be honest. But um, they, you know, they shouldn't. They should get salary. I mean, the queen is the head of state, so uh, she should get a salary for that. But you know, if that's, if that's I important. would say monarchy is not closer to anarcho-capitalism. There's only one thing that uh, we advocate for, this one, and that's property rights. That's it. Monarchy has to violate property rights through taxation for them to be wealthy it's not so much you can have money that's not really who we have no consequential like uh, the amount of money that's that uh uh you know steve jobs had you know uh doesn't affect me at all it's property rights uh the only reason why we advocate for property rights is because it's the most ethical system to uh to solve conflicts of dispute because resources are finite there's going to be conflict and then the only way to be able to own resources 
is through homesteading, unowned property, unowned resources, or through voluntary trading, title transfership of owner of, of items and goods and services. And that's it. Any other way to acquire goods and services and property is done through theft, right? Murdering other people, forcefully taking violence. The only thing that anarcho capitalists advocate for, just property rights. Body ownership and ownership of your property through voluntary trade or homesteading. That's it. This I do no, no weirder than that. I do very much appreciate the the romanticism of of this uh, of this notion, right? I do I do find that is it, it is a very it is a very nice notion. I do I do actually believe that anarcho capitalism can work in certain contexts. If you have if you have say you have a valley, and there's a, an amount of people there that is smaller than Dunbar's number, I think that I mean you see it in in some places, especially in the United States. Where anarcho capitalism works, it's just that yeah, once you go about it, Amish, for instance, uh, once you go over the uh, Dunbar's number, and once you are dealing with systems that are that are uh, of increasing complexity, um, you f you find that you run into a problem wherein uh, anarcho capitalism assumes a certain equality in the agency of people to do things as economic actors. And people are not equal or anywhere near equal as economic actors. People with more money do de facto have more power. That is even uh, this way in a, in, a, in a system where money is not the only means of achieving power. Uh, I mean, you can theoretically become the president of the United States without a dime to your name. And that would make you more powerful than all of the wealthiest people in the world, right? There's more than one way of achieving power, which I also believe is a very is a very important uh, factor. So that one factor isn't the only thing that determines the control you have over others. Uh, and so if, if, for instance, Steve Jobs decided that he was going to take your shit and he was going to enlist an army. He was going to use one of his billions and was going to enlist an army and send it after you. And it was, it was just take your shit. What are you going to do? That's a good question. Uh, here in the United States, you have the most well-armed population <laughs> region in the world, right? No. And not, not just recently. You just had uh, the Bundy Ranch situation. And which for the first time that I've ever seen, you had civilians, people. Rifles drawn at government agents, at the government, sights on, because the argument was for property rights, right? The argument wasn't about any kind of interesting moral issue. The property was, this is this is his land, this is his cattle ranch, this is the government choosing on his property rights. And so the argument for that won over anything the government could, could make up, and the government had to back down, and they did. So voluntary militias is not something that's, uh, you know, unique. Or, or different. You have coalitions of different types of uh, militaries, of security forces that have arised throughout history. You have a great example like uh, Greece. Greece was not a centralized uh, empire. It was made up of a 1,500 over that were over a thousand different types of city states, and that population, small in comparison to a Persian Empire, who came to them, outnumber them. They defeated them, right? You can have, but the, mm -hmm. but one thing that people ought to forget about. That a lot of people think like these communities spring out of nowhere, kind of like gnomes or dwarfs out of the ground, uh, like in uh, Token. For Steve Jobs or uh, Bill Gates to get this army, he needs logistics, he needs uh, services, he needs utilities, he needs a lot of these sort of things, these services that are already provided in the market. And a lot of these things that are already provided in the market wouldn't look so good on them to be showcased out there in the marketplace when they have many other competitors. Yeah, we're providing water to Bill Gates' uh, murderous entourage. That we're providing internet for them to go and murder and pave way and create this uh, Sherman's uh, you know march through Atlanta, for example, uh, and massacre of uh, millions of innocent people. Uh, it's 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 difficult enough to have logistics. It's difficult enough to find companies and businesses to be along with your murderous plan. And especially if you're a business, if you're a CEO, you're part of a board member. The moment you say, "Hey, yeah, we're making a lot of good profit. We're making a lot of good money." Uh, let's go and take their property and kill them. It's like, yeah, uh, you're fired. <laughs> Security, remove this guy. You know, this this is interesting, fantastical notion of like extreme examples, thinking like things kind of run through movies. But in the business world, you know, you get kicked out if you're going to make uh, you know horrible financial decisions. Uh, there's there's there are shark predators that will take over your company uh, as, as CEO to say they could do better than you. 
And they, 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 these things revolve all the time around here in, in the US and pretty sure maybe in Europe as well. Uh, the thing is that this whole thing of wealthy people essentially being the only ones that own the armies and the infrastructure has historically worked every single time. That is where we get monarchy from. That was just w dynasties of people who were for some reason wealthy and who, who continued to accumulate wealth and uh, nobody was able to remove them. Right. You can't even if you have even if you have a, 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 a board of directors, right, those those directors are making the, the investors, the big investors uh, are making massive amounts of money. So you would have the uh, the company that fires the immoral manager would at the end of the day not have not gain access to as many resources as the company that does not. Because that person would just continue taking resources and continue monopolizing um uh, the m monopolizing as many services as is possible to want to become one of those dystopian corporations that provide everything, you know, like Nestle. Um, I'd happily live in a Nestle, you know, uh, gated community, <laughs> free chocolate I mean, yeah, fountains. If you, if you're rich, <laughs> honestly, if you're rich, uh, probably it's great if you're rich, but if you're poor, it's not. And the, what you, what 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 I, what I want for people is for people who are poor to be able to become to to not starve basically and to advance societally and what we have seen historically in uh societies where there is no regulation of the market or regulation of the market in favor of those who are most wealthy is that the poorest in society lose out and that is something that we can see in in the united states of america today where the government legislates in favor of mass of the biggest and most powerful corporations so those corporations can uh, continue abusing government services and uh, monopoly keep their power monopolized um uh, in 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 and the the poorest people in america are becoming poorer and poorer the middle class is disappearing and uh, there is there is little they can do about it. And uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have you uh, let you have the last word in, in this whole thing. <laughs> I would say that um, an interesting example to talk about monarchies. Um, Machiavelli talked about in The Prince about how difficult it was for city states in Italy to conquer each other because they had to rely on private armies. And private armies, assuming the costs of the loss of their own infantry and men, uh, would not risk such a you know costly, dangerous engagement to just you know obliterate themselves. As has the centralization of states during uh, Napoleonic times, during uh, the Thirty Year Wars, or even during World War One, World War Two, the massacre of tens of millions and millions and millions of people during the centralization of warrens of centralized states. Uh, but when we're talking about the kings in comparison to today, the poor. For example, uh, the poor today are much richer than kings in the past because of capitalism, because of the marketplace, things that government never created, things such as like 90, over 90 percent have a refrigerator, 97 percent, 96 percent have a gas or electric stove. You know, these things were considered a luxury back then. Over 96 percent have a television over. They have microwaves, video recorders, air conditioning, cell phones, clothes, washer machine, uh, clothes dryers, computers, landlines. These are things that were considered would be considered more luxurious in the the Vanderbilts or the richest people over 100 years ago in the United States, right? Because of capitalism, these people today can live luxurious and far wealthier than kings of the past, and that's not because of the state. That's not because of centralized powers. This is because of in spite of a centralized control, because in spite of socialism, that they create these sort of things. And I think that more competition in the market creates these things, whereas centralization, control, monopolization. Of these goods and services stagnate prices and increase them and quality reduces the marketplace in its competition does the opposite it lowers prices because of that in competition it increases quality you know you can find flat screen tvs for example hundreds of dollars several years ago today is a few hundred bucks you know you can say you can have the freedom economic freedom to cancel and subscribe to say no you can go to somewhere else you have the freedom to compete and these centralized services, you don't. If you try to compete, you go to jail. If you try to escape or run away or resist, stop resisting, you're murdered. They shoot your dog, at least here in the United States. And you find then a history of centralization of any goods and services, even from China, because technically that centralization of services leads to the wholesale onslaught of, um, of th millions of people. It never just stops, it's just a few services and goods here and there. It always increases. Um, and Europe right now has a problem with the euro collapsing 
and we're going to see what's going to happen after that. You should be playing what happened in Cyprus. They stole, stole 50% off everyone's savings. Froze everyone's assets, stole it right off the bat. So I guess we'll find out, I guess, if, if centralization is a, a good measure, a way to provide this kind of prosperity and, and safety, even though the past several world wars have shown that it's not and led to the onslaught of tens of millions of people. Uh, we'll see where it goes and see if Europe survives. Uh, we're talking about like these other particular regions in which they have like safety and security. And, you know, they have grooming rape gangs in England now. Sweden, they say, is the rape capital of the world. Uh, this allowance of... Uh, borders is not pretty much secure when you have a domination of um, any majority group that can take over the democracy process. Muslim groups, for example, they have no interest in Western culture and, and, and Western tradition and just to dominate and control. And we'll see whether if Europe turns into an Islamic state and maybe if you expatriate here to the U.S. and <laughs> we'll have some beers after that. <laughs> we'll never probably visit the U.S. I mean, I do, of course, disagree with every single thing you just said. <laughs> but I did, I did. <laughs> But I did, I did say I was going to give you the last word. I did, one thing I want to mention, yeah. the euro is not collapsing. It is still the most valuable large trade currency in the world, more valuable than the dollar. I just want to, I just want to point that out. I'm a Bitcoin but, guy. Uh, <laughs> Bitcoin is good. <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to tell you a fucking story about Bitcoin, right? When I was like 16 years old, I saw Bitcoin and I was enamored with it, right? Back then, like one euro was round about one Bitcoin. And I said, hey, 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 uh, hey, uh, people, authority figures in my life, I would very much wish I have 300 euros left. May I invest those in Bitcoin? No. And they said no. <laughs> that is why I now live below the poverty line. <laughs> no, that sucks, man. That is, it, it, is, it is terrible. But I, I, I do appreciate that. I do think that Bitcoin and currencies like it are, very, are going to be a very good part, very integral part of the future. Because I don't, I don't like governments controlling money in the way that they do. And I especially don't like banks controlling money in the way that they do. <laughs> I'd rather have the government doing it than, than banks, but in an optimal world, neither. We should definitely talk more yes. at some point. Yes, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually uh, this has been a lot more fun than I expected. I you know I might uh, I don't know if you have a podcast or something. I uh, I I I'm probably going to have you on on my podcast at some point. Uh, this was this was cool, man. Yeah, I, I enjoyed yeah. this. Yeah, no, I know. I've seen some of your videos. You're very good at uh, I don't know. It's a very Kafka esque sometime, and the way you just kind of throw things and mess <laughs> things out all over the place. Uh, no, it's very good, very entertaining. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll be down for that. Um, and uh, let's catch up and see after like we digest some more of our information and talking points from each other and uh, yeah. talk again. Yeah, man. I, very much so. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone, for, for watching this. I hope you had as much fun as we did. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording now. <laughs> Take good care and stay liberated. Yeah, you too, man. Stay. Don't, don't, let, don't let the government get you. <laughs>